he can have a bloody birthday party. Of course party. he can, but he's just saying it. They're all going to bring friends and there's going to be bloody a million people here. We haven't got the room. Of course we haven't got the room. He's not stupid. Well, you heard what he just said, Nolan. God, truth, Laurie. One of these days I'll pack me bloody bags and I'm going out of here. Truly, there's more drama living in this house than living out of it. I don't know why. I don't know why. Really? Wouldn't have a clue. Did you ever have a party as a child? Of course I did. How many parties did you have as a child? Oh, I would have had two or three when I was a kid. Did, did you have one when you were 16? A teenager? I can't remember whether I had one But 16's six an age. Oh, I can't remember whether I had a party. I probably did. Oh, God. I can't believe something. Because the cops will only come here once or twice and they'll leave you on your own if we keep ringing them, if there's what? trouble here. The cops well, there's be... not going to be any trouble. Well, Michael seems to think there is. Well, yeah, there's going to be trouble. Michael seems to think there's going to be trouble there. if we've got well, no bouncers here. Why would you need a bouncer at the gate? Come on. I'm just saying. Well, say I invite three guys, they bring a friend along. He's he's a guy that I don't like. Well, you're not to bring friends. You've invited them. Oh, and okay. they're going to do that. It's by invitation only. Well, you only. Well, you've only, we've only got room for 30 people here, maximum. So oh. if you've invited 37 and they're all going to bring friends, we haven't got enough room. Have we? Common sense. Yeah, about me. Just forget Michael, about it. Michael, you can sit right down. All I'm saying is... You can cut it out right now. You've invited 37 right people here and they're all going to bring friends. You can't bring friends. You sit down right now. For God's sake, he can have a bloody birthday party. Of course party. he can, but he's just saying it. They're all going to bring friends and there's going to be bloody a million people here. We haven't got the room. Of course we haven't got the room. He's not stupid. Well, you heard what he just said, Nolan. I'm Michael Baker. That was me who Mum and Laurie were arguing about again. I'm 15 years old and I live in Sylvania Waters, a suburb south of Sydney. I don't know if we're a typical Australian family, but this is our life. It's fairly complicated, but you'll get the hang of it as it goes along. In the middle of it all is my mum, Nolene. You're going to see me as I am. As me. I'm me. I can't be nice and I can't be Joan Collins. I'm me. I'm me. Then there's Laurie. He's my stepfather, but mum and him aren't married yet. He's also really interested in car racing. Driving a racing car, 10 tenths is like going to bed with a good woman. Oh. Very exciting. <laughs> Very exciting. <laughs> Very exciting. When you get out of it, you think, Jesus, I've got to do that again. <laughs> I'm pretty good friends with my brother's girlfriend, Dion. She's expecting a baby real soon. I went through a really bad stage in my teenage years and treated my mum like a bitch and left home early and after all this time it's taken me to be pregnant to realise, you know, my God, look what my mum went through for me. I've got a big brother named Paul. He's the one who lives with Dion. He left home when he was 16 because he found it hard getting along with mum and Laurie. Him and mum would go out. Now us kids weren't allowed to sit and watch TV so he'd take the knobs out of the TV. Now, and stuff like that really got up my nose, and that's probably why I'm still a bit bitter towards him, because in the early days he wasn't my father and he had no right to tell me what to do. He even hit me on a few occasions. And him and Mum threw me out of home. Laurie's got a son of his own called Mick. He's my stepbrother. He's a pretty straightforward kind of guy. No, he's been married to someone who's got no interest whatsoever in what you do and is not going to be prepared to back you up and who you've basically got to fight with to do what you want. You know, Yvette, Yvette's really good with me. I mean, she lets me get away with murder. I do some of the stupidest things, like ride motorbikes at, you know, nearly 30 years old and I'm still riding around a motorbike like I was 16 and race cars. Finally, there's Yvette. She's married to Mick. I like her. She's pretty funny. Well, you come to Nolene's house and it's different than our house. It's different than Paul and Dion's. Just shows you how what you work for is what you eventually achieve. And like three Australian families and we all live differently. Even though we're all Australian, we're different. Looking really happy and nice and relaxed. Fine. And the cat as well, there's the cat. So that's my family. There's also a couple of dogs, a couple of birds, and a couple of cats, but that's basically it. But by the way, you won't be seeing me for a while. I'm going overseas to my school on rugby tour. But that doesn't mean the arguments will stop. My family, like, just can't get it to work. Where's the type of paper? Probably out. Brand new pens. That's not a brand new pen. Didn't you bought two of those about three yeah, months ago. Yeah, that's that's not that one though, is it? Well, that's another one I used. One of those that was the same. 
There's nothing wrong with that one. One of the other ones I just used was the same. That's what I'm saying to you. I didn't say it for fun. Yeah. No, one this, of those I picked up this first. This is the one you had. So I picked up one of those first. Right. And I said, that's the third one. Didn't you hear me say that? But there's nothing wrong with that one. Look. There probably was never anything wrong with it. It wouldn't write when I wanted it to write. If you leave it for a while and play with it, it'll probably work. I, I was name. pretty damn sure from the time I ever first saw Laurie that he was the one I was going to go for. And three weeks later, we were living together at Bexley. And we started our life from there. I was going to do something else. He had a boat on high purchase and a car on high purchase. He would do anything in the world to make you happy. Anything in the world. You can have anything you like. OK, he can drink as good as the average Australian. And he can, at times, be very stern or strict. Basically, no, he's a softie. I enjoy our lifestyle more so than the money. It's not as if you have a lot of money. It's what you buy with the money you've saved. If you have anything at all, you've got to absolutely look after it. Otherwise, it'll just phase away. It'll just go. come from being a child of a very, very big family to a separated mother to here, where I am now, um, you're always frightened someone's going to come and take it off you. You're always frightened that, uh, will it last? Australia is so young and has so much going. Any person at all in 13 years could be where we are now. Any one. We're in Sylvania Waters, which is quite a new area of Sydney. When we bought this house, it was just a normal little three bedroom and we decided we would put a second story on. It's got a tile pool. It's got fully ducted air conditioning. We had a valuation done actually about six months ago and it was valued at a um, million dollars. We're lucky to have it and we try to utilise it as much as we can and, and use the water. But, um, that's the whole idea of the house, being on the water here. No one gave us any money at all. What you see, this is exactly what we've, we've done with our lives. And it's taken us 13 years. I don't think there's any pretentious people living around here, really. They're all uh, basically... Workers? Workers or people with small businesses that have, that have done all right, but there's no, um, no big, big natives around here or people with a lot of money, a hell of a lot of money. They all struggle for what they've got. work if people want to work I think there's work people that can work but depend on other people to help them along the way Plenty they're the bludgers bludges. yes there's, there's a few different plenty of those about <laughs> plenty of bludgers about <laughs> the person <laughs> down here wants to know why you've got all this they can't understand that you've got all this where'd you get it all from well it <laughs> it didn't come from parents it wasn't left to you that's right there, there was nothing to be left Laurie was an only child but he it wasn't left to Laurie it was left to his mother and that's exactly how it should have been anyway. But we, we have worked, haven't we? Oh, my word. Yes. We started off with $3,000 each, Laurie and I, 13 years ago. So, you know, you have to work, but there's a lot of people that don't want to work. And when they do get a job, they do nothing but mess it up. They're getting it too easy. They can go and collect right. money. I mean, what they should be given is a ticket, a meal yeah, ticket yeah. Or, mm. or clothing tickets, right. not, not cash right. in their hand. Now, Please I mean... We hire labour. Clean up. Two companies in the metal trades. Tool makers, fitter welders, trade assistants, truck drivers, you name it, we've got them. We are a little bit of a threat to unions. They work as subcontractors. 
they're not wage earners. They work at that site for whatever time they require. They can work for a day, a month, a year. We've got men in jobs that have been there for 13 years in the same position for 13 years, doing the same job for 13 years. But the union, they call our class of business scab labour. Not all of our family live in a big house on the water. Paul and Diane and their future baby live in more modest surroundings at Mortale. That little nipples there, baby. And she always has. Girls have nipples, you know, boys have them too. Yeah, he's got lipstick. <laughs> he's got a lipstick. And one. Paul and I were having a fight, and um, we were having re we were going through a really, really bad stage in our relationship early this year, where we nearly broke up, and um, and I said. You know, we were having this really bad fight, and I said, Paul, I'm pregnant. And he just went, what? <laughs> and we sort of just looked at each other and went, oh, my God, <laughs> unreal. And it was all like, oh, God, I can't believe it, you know. And straight away, you know, we thought, right, this is it. We're having this baby. We're going to have this baby. And because I, I have had a previous termination, and it was horrible. I just... I had to have a week off work. I just went through really bad fits of depression. I wished it never happened. And um, after that, we said, that's it. You know, the next baby, if, if it's unplanned or planned, we're going to have this child and raise it and look after it and be a family. And that's what we've done. And we're really happy and looking forward to it. I'm going to have a look at my little brother here. Is this why they have the babies? This is, this is it. Mm. I thought it was like a, an operating room. Now they will, you see. It's probably the best looking room. I love Dion, and I'll scream it from the top of the mountain. I'll ride it all the way down my body if I have to, you know. I'll do anything to show anybody that I love Dion. <laughs> you won't hear it. I don't know where she put it. <laughs> Down here, your dad. <laughs> Paul really opens up. You know, I've never known a guy to open up the way he does. I swear till I'm black and blue, I'm never going to leave Dion. Yeah, that's it. I feel never, the same. Ever. How many customers have you upset now, Mick? Three. Three customers, mate. They are here. Yeah. It's a great job, you know. It's outside. I'm not in a factory on a press gun, kakoosh, kakoosh, or something like that all day. I'm not cooped up. Suits me to a T. The only thing bad about it is I don't get enough money, that's all. You know, I wouldn't have another job bar this. I'm here for the rest of my life, probably. If I want to go have lunch right now, I can go have lunch. It's just so my face went right away with cancer. Just to protect you from Jeez, you're going to need a lot up there. <laughs> Gives him a chance to think when yeah. he's out there by himself. He tells me he does a lot of his thinking out at sea when he's just sitting there by himself. Like, you look around now, there's no waves. And like, times like that, you just chick, chick, chick. And, like, for the last six months, it's been baby Dion, baby Dion, just running from your head while I'm surfing. And it's made me feel good. It keeps me out of trouble. And it's, you know, it's relatively cheap and healthy. unless Paul and Dion actually buckle down. Sit down and say, right, this is our budget. This is what we can afford to do. Live basic for 12 months and save. And I cannot see Paul and Dion buying a house this side of 10 years. No, nothing happened. What a freak out. What a disappointment. <laughs> Were you... That's what the midwife said as well. She said, hot bath, hot curry and hot sex. And she said that usually brings it on, but they had a hot bath and then nothing happened, so. <sighs> Mick and Yvette are in their own house on the outskirts of Sydney. Their house is a lot more relaxed than ours. 
I mean, like, the kids can run around and make a mess and stuff. I was 13 years old when I first went out with her. I was 16, going on 17. Are you stuck, Lou? Yes. And I had a car when she when I first went out with her, and it was a hot one with V8 with big side pipes on it, and you know it was cool to go out with Mick because he had this big V8 car and everything. And so I mean, she's always been involved with that with me. I've always been involved in cars and motor racing and motorsport, and she's basically just grown up with it almost, you know, since childhood sweethearts, I suppose. So she just. Goes along with it. You know, she's just been involved with it so long. She likes it, I suppose. Well, she says she does. <laughs> I don't have much time to do anything because by the time I finish work and come home and cook and clean, I've just got no time really to do anything. The weekends I work. It's hard working with him because. Might be something in the mechanism, you know? Like, but, uh, we I want to talk to him at work and he can't talk because he's too busy. Then when we get home, I want to start talking about what I want to ask him and he doesn't want to talk about work. So it makes it really hard. Yeah, OK, mate, that's all right. Give us a ring in the morning before you come up just to make sure. If you take Mick and Yvette, they're hard workers. They will get on top and they'll be exactly the same as Laurie and I. Paul and Dion have to learn to go to work and forget the little things like animals, bits and pieces, work, go to work. Tonight, Prime Minister Keating sets a course for economic recovery. A vanquished Bob Hawke makes an emotional departure from centre stage. I'm not Labor myself, but I really think that what Paul Keating did was the most disgusting thing. Underhanded treatment. I feel sorry for him. He's a good man. He's a proper Aussie, you know. He's a human being. Like I said, where Paul Keating's like a computer. He's like a robot. You know, everything yeah, is... He's a good... Yeah, well... <laughs> you better watch the racist things you say. <laughs> I was nearly going to say something else. You won't go anywhere. After being in Hong Kong... A froggy... dreaded yellow peril. A frog. Because they don't speak English, they think you don't know. I had a man that walked... Uh, uh, a waiter came into our room with a cup of tea and I didn't have any change. Laurie was in the shower and I turned around to this guy and I thought, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I said, I've got no change. And he went, all but spat at me. Oh, Did he? Little. Yeah. Wouldn't employ another one. I think they should go back to their own country and stay there. Right, it's just not basketball. Paul was about 13 when Laurie first came to live with us. They've never really hit it off. Paul kind of resents him a bit. Mum started that business. Laurie can be a director or whatever. But Mum's in charge, that's her business, because she had it before she met Laurie. Laurie goes, it's what I own over in the factory is mine. I've worked hard for it and I don't want you to go over and touch it. And what I own in this house, in my house, well, you know, that offends me because it's not his house. Paul never accepted Laurie at all and never will. I can't explain why he doesn't accept Laurie because Laurie is so very, very good to him. But he just doesn't. Paul doesn't get on very well with Laurie. He wants the best for his mum and he feels that, you know, Fair enough, his mum's happy, but he wants more. He wants, like, his mum to be happy, you know, for the rest of her life, no stress. And But little does he realise, he causes a lot of stress for his mum. He puts a lot of stress on her. He puts his foot in it, and that's his big problem. He doesn't think before he says a lot of things, and it gets him into trouble. My last 13 years of my life have been the best years of my life for everyone that I know in my family. And most importantly, Laurie. He's my best friend in my life. And we have thought about getting married, but we've always said, until the children are off our hands. So I think, yes, we will go to Monaco and we will just be married with our neighbours as our witnesses, and then we'll come home and we'll tell everyone we're going to get married. So you see, my children eventually will have a stepfather. And you can have a party. And look at your photos. You can no. have a barbecue in the backyard. No. Your photos. Piss up. <laughs> I think 
As I'm getting older, I'd like to belong to somebody. Yeah. He's a nice bloke, he makes my mum happy, and that's all it is, you know? I can't live with my mum for the rest of my life, so... She's happy with this man, so let her be happy. And that's something I've got to come to terms with. Thought I'd come to terms with it, but I still got a bit of animosity about it. I just thought the family had been on it instead of the neighbours, don't you? I'm not stirring and having a fight or nothing, but it's just news. It's, you know, if they do that, they do that. All the best to them, you know. Well done. I thought you'd take your family instead of your neighbours. That's all. But you see, there's, there's our family and everyone that's been in our lives. Exactly, and like, you're going to take Alan and Pat. And... No, we're not taking Alan and Pat. They're coming with us. All right. Hey, so... Poss, guess what? what? They're getting married in Monaco next year. They're really? Wow. Unreal, it's about time. Oh, great. Top stuff. Better start looking at Boys wedding rings. Upset. Who, what? What are you looking at? Wedding upset? rings. Yeah. Why is he upset? Because he won't be at the wedding. Oh, I'm upset too. Right. Hello, Paul. Hello, Paul. How are you? Not bad. How's work? Busy. Work. Sorry about the phone call before. You're right. I bawled my eyes out straight after it because I was so frustrated about the heat. <laughs> when you stuck my head yeah, under No, I just went and stuck my head in the shower. Just sitting there going, ah, <laughs> crying. It was so hot. You don't have to cry, boss. It's hot. Hello, Cocky. Hello, mate. How you doing? He's been a bit of a spin out today. He's been really, really quiet. Mummy gave you some water? Yeah. What's he spilt it already? Look at the mess, Paul. You're going to have to yeah. clean up in here. It's a pigsty. It is rather a pig style. Yes, well, it's you make your a mess, animal. Barney. You make a mess. You make more mess than I do every day. He wouldn't even get out of his cage for me before. He just, you know how he just sits there and Hello, just mate. looks at you and shakes his head from side to side? I have a bad disease at the moment. I keep putting my foot in my mouth. So I don't want to put my foot in my mouth on Christmas Day, so I'll stay away and um, train my foot to stay out of my mouth. I don't know what it is with Paul. I don't know what it is. He always hits below the belt. No matter when he's in this house, you can, it's only a matter of time before it builds up and explodes. Bloody hot night, isn't it? You, you're hot, or is it just me? It's warm, isn't it? I knocked him off the chair when I said about the wedding. He nearly died. He must have known we were going to get married one day. They always are very jealous of somebody that comes in and takes their own father's place, aren't they? You see it time and time. He said to me, you've even got Michael loving Laurie. But I think Paul loves Laurie. I know Laurie loves my three kids. I know he does. Not quite perhaps the same way he loves his own children, but I know he loves my kids. What would you do? I don't know. It's hard for me to say because I'm not in that situation, but... You had... See, I look at it differently because he's not related to me, really. Well, he will be when you're married, because he'll be my stepbrother in law. But, um. Better off to stay away. Maybe even stay away for Chrissy, too. They got what they want now. They got the house to themselves, no kids, no nothing. I bet you they whinge about it. I bet you. Are you coming on Christmas Day, Mick? Yeah. Well, Good. <laughs> Oh, I think you might be in trouble. Where do you start with one? Mick's never ever got angry with me. Paul does nothing but try to get angry. I'm sure at times he comes here holding a red flag in front of his nose the moment he comes through the, our front door. Well, they raised it. I don't know what's his name, isn't it? Bloody dirty. The less seen, the better, I think, because that lets them get on with what they want to do, and um, I've got a big job in front of me, so. I'll just hang out at home, I think. Go surfing and play with my animals and Dion. Hey, Barney. What's that, mate? Oh, God. You didn't, uh, well, that's us, the family. Well, two families, really. There's Mum's kids and Laurie's kids, and that can cause problems. 
as you'll see throughout the series. Go upstairs and shampoo your hair. I've got no money to do it. I haven't got enough money to buy a cheap of friggin' toothpaste. So they're like, get it, go out and get pissed. What are you talking about? I did that. Stop talking. I won. That's it. It's all over. No contest. What are you talking about? Garbage. That's if you sell the stereo and put the money into the race car. Bullshit. And stick that up your nose, boy. Oh, kid, no, that's it. That's Come on. That is it. My bloody family. What am I meant to say to my relatives? You can't stay in the house. Laurie's can. My, mine can't. God, bloody mighty. No wonder I drink. Well, it's not all domestics. You'll see some good times as well. For example, you can thrill to Mum and Laurie dancing. Behave yourself. Like all parents, Mick and Yvette sometimes find themselves doing things that they normally wouldn't do. Oh, open. Holy shit. And Mum just likes arranging <laughs> cultural events. Oh, I tell you what I did last week. What did you do oh, last week? I tell you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How did we get so drunk? It was your fault. You made the drinks. You're a dag, Norman. You're a dag. That's a horse's. A sheep's. A dag, yeah. Just hangs off a sheep's bum. I'm not one of them. <laughs> Yum, boom. Two together. What's that? We're going to Brandy and Santa. Hey, uh, baby, boogie. Oh. <laughs> Do you put the milk in after the tea bag comes out? And then. There's a nail-biting drama to keep you on the edge of your seats. Oh, no, he hasn't. Oh, shit, it is. Oh, no. Where's Mick? You haven't brought your blood pressure down enough, unfortunately. It's still the same, is it? Oh, it's still too much. He's overweight, high blood pressure, a drunk, disorderly, stresses out. You don't drink too much. I drink too much. Have I got a problem with alcohol? No, you haven't. Oh my god, my stomach. I don't, I don't yell and scream gotta... and spit out of my mouth and throw stuff. There's something wrong, Mum. And then there's those ordinary and somehow tender moments that we choose to cherish in our lives. Now, pink doesn't really suit you, it's going to say that in black. Oh, I can't wear black. I'm not wearing black till my wedding. Yellow. Or cream. Is that nice? Mm -hmm. Well, just let me dream, then all right? I'll, then I'll forgive you. Just let me dream. I just saw it pretending that I've got It'd money. It'd be like me going on about surfboards. I can't. Oi. We have our ups, we have lots of the ups, and we have an awful lot of the downs, but basically it's no different to the family up the street.